my purpose in performing, in singing, in sharing is to free people, to free them. I'm gonna take you on a journey with me and you're gonna relax and you're gonna be happy and you're gonna be thankful and you're gonna feel something from me. I'm gonna make you feel it. <laughs> That's what I believe my purpose is. When I think back of my childhood memories, it's as if I've woken up from a dream. I grew up in Kailua. Um, both parents spoke Hawaiian, sang a lot of Hawaiian music, and also listened to Carpenters, Carol King, Kalapana, Sunday Manoa, Crack Seed. So our house was always full of music. And my father sang me to sleep with his ukulele. Songs like Kaimana Hila, songs like Kialoha. Those basic songs were shared around the dinner table. They were shared at the beach, you know, around the picnic table at night under the moon with the ocean in the background. So those songs compared to a lot of the other pop music were like family songs. No Ko'olau Ku'u Aloha expresses my love for Ko'olau Poko. Ko'olau Poko is from Waimanalo all the way down to Ku'oloa. This side is just a side that I resonate with so easily and naturally. I remember a winter mall performance where it was just me and the guitar, and I gave a fun performance. I had fun, the audience had fun, and after the show, my dad said, hey, you get a out with just you and your guitar. <laughs> but it really gave me a sense of, like, yeah, I can do it. Nani Ke Aloha is a brand new song. It was written by my dear friend, Kao Idaleri. Mylani and I have a great relationship and we work well together because we're friends and we know what it's like to go through hard times 
and we also know what it feels like to be happy and successful. So we understand. It's a good partnership where we just really want the best for each other. When we were creating this mele at Halepo Kene Kene, our place in Kane Ohe, we just played some music together, a jam session, Kane Kapila, and it's got a beautiful country vibe to it. This mele talks about having your deepest desires fulfilled, getting what you want, and I hope people enjoy it just as much as I have. I knew that I wanted to do music forever. Any way I could be in front of an audience and free people from concern, even for just a minute. Or make someone laugh, make someone smile, or make someone remember a golden moment in their life. I could play to the, to the beat of my own drum, and I could share the stories that I wanted to share. Hamama Cut You took place on a journey that I had taken my dear friend up to see Hamama, the beautiful waterfall of Valley in Kahalu. We were going through a lot of different things personally and also professionally. And I just said, hey, you know what? Cancel everything, cancel the day. I'll just take you somewhere. So we went on this journey. It gets pretty steep up there. My friend was asking, what are we doing here? When are we gonna, I'm hot, I'm, I'm tired, my body hurts. So finally, we got closer, then we started listening to the rush of the Kahawai. You could hear the river get louder and louder. And right there, right in front of us, you know, Kui Kanani was Hamama. All that water 
just washed away any of our confusions, any of our frustrations, any of our doubts. This mele covers that understanding of when you're going through hard times. And so for us, this song was, you're on a journey and you will get tired. It's gonna be a little painful sometimes, but you'll get there, keep going. So Kau'i came up with the words, her son came up with the music, and Ti Aloha Deliri came up with the leo. This is one of those songs that Aloha Deliri put her, put her mana on and imbued it with her knowledge, her beauty, and her strength. There are many advantages that come along with uh, living a legacy that my mom left behind for us. It was her life's work to pave the path for myself and my two sisters. So there's a lot of kuleana that comes along with that. I see colors in what I hear. For me, it really is about the music first, actually. And then when the music is so good that I'm wanting to learn more about it, then I'll read up on the story and get as much as I can 
about the background of how this mele was written. Habepila is a Molokai song. Um, uh, you could kind of interpret its naughtiness. I always love dedicating to the kupuna that I see in the audience. Oftentimes I feel that our kupuna get overlooked in society, but they're very kolohe, they're very rascally. They still have that fire deep within. Mylani has great genealogy. She comes from Ali'i. She is, in her own right, already creating a legacy for herself. You know, through her music, she just captivates you and takes you on that journey, and you can see it. She's the best storyteller. Kawaile Hua Ala Kahonua is written by Uncle Frank Koi Kapu Kalani Hewitt. A lot of Haumana of Hula know how to dance this song. So when I started performing with Kaui, little did I know this is also one of her favorite songs to dance. So I would always sing this song and I love to share the story and the mo'olelo of Ohi and Lehua before I actually perform this song. So here's the story of this mele because it talks about the Lehua blossom. So very long ago, Hawaiians say kava kahiko in the ancient days, Pele was working very hard in her volcano, in her lua pit. 
and she needed to take a break. I mean, she grew all the islands to finally, from Kauai all the way to Hawaii, she decided to take this short break. So out she comes out of her volcano, and in the distance, she sees this tall, dark, handsome, muscular Hawaiian man. And so her eyes get ono for him. So Pele being Pele, she's fearless, confident. If she wants something, she's going to get it. So she walks right up to this kane, this man. Aloha mai, pehe mai ne oi, oi ko inoa, nohe mai ne oi. She's saying, aloha, who are you and where are you from? And this man says, aloha mai, o ohi avau ko inoa, I'm ohia. No puna mai au, I'm from puna. And so they get to talking story. And Pele is checking him out big time. She's crushing on this guy. And her body's kind of heating up in a fun way that women's bodies heat up when we're having fun, when we're seeing someone that we want. But little does Pele know, this Kane is married. He's promised to another Wahine. And this Kane is a very loyal, faithful Kane. He's not going to cheat on his wife. So he gets the intuition that Pele is checking him out. And he has to stop her game before it gets disastrous. So he lets her know early on. I call my Pele, but I'm actually married, and I love my wife very much. And in fact, she's coming home right now, so nothing's gonna happen here in layman's terms. And Pele immediately she feels rejected and embarrassed, and then all of those emotions turn into anger and resentment, and she's sassy. So she says, "He how he my lakao? Like what? What the heck are you talking about? Show me this wahine. I want to know who you're married to." that you wouldn't say yes to me. And so Ohia says, well, she's coming home right now. This is who she is. His wahine comes, and his wahine says, Aloha mai pele, o lehua no vau, no puna mai au, ea, ea ka ukane. She says, Aloha, my name is Lehua. I'm from this area, and this is my husband. And immediately, Pele flares up in flames, fire in the eyes, her hair's on fire, everything's on fire, then boom! She blows them up to crisp and ash. The end. <laughs> I got a little bit more for you. <laughs> All of a sudden, Pell is feeling a little bit good that she got to get her anger out. And she's feeling a little remorseful, like, oh man, am I a monster? Oh, I don't know. You know, this guy, he rejected me. No one rejects me, I'm Pele. And all of a sudden, out of the ocean, comes her brother Kamuoli, the shark god, and he lands next to her on, on the aina. And he says, oh, Pele, why you do that for? Out of the sky, Kahekili, the god of lightning, her other brother, lands right next to her. The, the strike of boatning lights. And he says the same thing. Man, Pele, why did you do that? We have to be nice to the humans, or no one will pray to us and we'll disappear. And then all of Pele's sisters, and she's got about 11 of them, they all come and tell her the same thing. Chit chat, chit chat, and Pele doesn't want to hear it. And you know how it feels when you have brothers and sisters telling you what to do, and some of them don't even know what they're talking about. Pele was getting pretty frustrated and wasn't really hearing any of her brothers and sisters. Finally, her baby sister, her most precious favorite sibling, Hi'iaka Kapolio Pele, comes through the line and humbly, quietly whispers in her ear, and she says, you know, Pele, we can't really blow people up just because they don't do what we want them to do. It's not Pono. And Pele takes a moment. She calms down and she says, yeah, you're right. So she prays. Even Pele as a god, as an Akua, prays to a higher power. And out of this mound of crispin ash grows this beautiful tree. And it is known as the Ohi Alehua tree. And when you go to Kilauea, when you go to Hale Mauma'u and you visit Pele, the only plant life that you'll see to this day, the only plant life, life form that can break through that a'a, that can break through that pahoehoe, is Ohi Alehua. And that's why anytime you pick a flower, it cries because these lovers long to be together.
I can be a leader in my daughter's eyes and show her, if you have a dream and you believe in it, don't let anybody stop you, especially yourself. So when I get tired, when things, you know, bog me down, stop, say a prayer, and just realize that this is the right of my life and I cannot take it for granted. So get up and get going. This program was made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.